Good morning, everyone. I hope we've had our coffees. I apologize, I've lost my voice a little bit from our nice cocktail yesterday evening, so bear with me. Um, Olivia is joining me here, so I'll start and then I'll, I'll hand it over to you. We're really happy to be with you this morning. I think um, there are quite a few questions that came up yesterday that I think uh, I hope we'll, we'll start to answer in our presentation and, and continue the conversation today. So looking forward to it. Um, we have two things to share with you. The first, I want to give a brief update on the launch launch a uh, continuation of the preventive program and um, the launch of Gavi's uh, funding for the preventive program next year and how that transition is going to look and then Olivia will will share about the market shaping roadmap that is in development okay. um, so this is very similar to what the setup is that we have now for cholera vaccine uh, which is a, a split between both the emergency use and the preventive use. The, the change is that from beginning of next year, from January, countries will be able to apply directly to Gavi for multi-year plans, so one application for a multi-year period. And what this also means, uh, you'll see here that additional support that will be available next year, starting next year, and even you can actually apply now, is for other Gavi mechanisms like targeted country assistance, which is in-country TA, um, health system strengthening funds, full portfolio planning, all of these grants that uh, Gavi provides, usually through the immunization program. Um, cholera is now eligible, so if there are needs, uh, in-country TA needs for um, surveillance or planning, implementing campaigns, uh, there's additional funding uh, available for these from next year. And everything is now on our website, um, and I can share that link with, with those who are interested. So in terms of the, the timeline, uh, in, in June I told you that the guidance was coming soon. It's now officially on the website, as I said, from since July. The funding guidelines, the application forms, um, everything is there. The main, uh, well, we'll get to the, the more details on what that entails in a minute. Um, so over the next few months, we want to work with uh, each of the different countries that are in the process of developing these plans to determine you know, um, what support is needed and how to go through the application process. We want to work very closely with you, together with GTFCC, to, to walk through this uh, transition and this process with you. So from January, the, the applications will be able to receive applications directly. That's the, the big information, so please be aware of that. And from next year, there will be a quarterly opportunity, a quarterly opportunity to submit um, preventive applications. Um, so what we expect to happen for the preventive campaigns next year is that those um, applications, those plans that are already approved this year, we know there's a few uh, campaigns pending, those will continue and be implemented next year. So those, those will continue and in the meantime, um, we'll be reviewing new applications so that those, may, those campaigns may commence um, as, soon, as soon as we're able to towards the end of next year. So this slide may be familiar to, to most of you. Um, this is the process. It's really not so different uh, from the process now. What has changed is what's in green. So instead of the approval for the preventive plans being uh, managed through GTFCC, um, it will be, the review will be done by an independent review committee. And this is similar to other Gavi applications uh, for vaccine support. Um, so what's really important here is also to see what partners are available to, to support the different countries and we're here, you know, all here to engage with you in these conversations um, in terms of the planning, the writing, the implementing, uh, for you to share with us what, what the needs are and we can identify where, where we've been discussing amongst uh, the partners who can provide what support and we're really happy to have these conversations with you based on uh, what you see the needs are. Okay, so this is what the new application package is going to look like. Uh, again, happy to go in the details one-on-one uh, -on -one with you later. Um, the main document is this multi-year plan of action that uh, I believe Lucy was talking about yesterday. Um, and this is the, the guide for what to include in the plan. And this was part of the OCV working group. Uh, we developed this earlier this year. 
So along with this plan, this narrative of the, of the campaign plans, um, the other main documents are to have a budget, uh, and then there's some extra pieces about a high-level work plan, which districts are targeted, but really the budget and this plan of action are the, are the main pieces. Um, so just summarizing a few of the, the key considerations when we were designing this um, program and, and through the transition from how the preventive program is now to, to the future. Um, so <coughs> one is that the plans um, will really be based on the hotspot uh, analysis um, that's conducted through the GTFCC approach. So that's really a prerequisite, is that that will inform the applications. Um, and we are really hoping to see NCPs, National Caller Control Plans, alongside these applications, especially if it's an application for revaccination. Um, because we recognize that cholera vaccine is just one piece of a, a bigger strategy. So we want to also see some commitment and plans to the longer term strategy. Um, so again, it's one application for a multi-year plan, so you only need to apply once for the entire plan, even if it's three or five years. Um, because it's a preventive campaign, there's no co-financing, which is great news for us, <laughs> uh, unless there's very repeated use and, and we're not seeing um, you know, uh, high coverage and, and quality campaigns. So as long as we are kind of following the SAGE guidance, uh, countries are following SAGE guidance in terms of how the vaccine should be used, there will be no co-financing. Um, operational costs are available for these, will be tiered based on the country uh, transition status at Gavi, similar to our other campaigns. Um, the important piece to mention is that uh, once the applications are approved, there's an allocation that will take place, and this is one of the key activities for the working group this next quarter, the next over the next quarter or two, uh, and we'll start the discussion, I think, this morning about what will this preventive vaccine allocation process look like. So coming back here, it's this first pink box. Um, so this is separate from the approval. This is not uh, Gavi responsible for the, uh, the allocation. This is um, a, a process that will be managed by, by GTFCC, and, and we will define what that looks like over the next quarter or two. But what we hope is that this will give more visibility to countries about what to expect in the, in the subsequent year. Um, so that rather than each month wondering what is available, you will know for the next year this is what has been allocated to my, to my country. So that's the direction that we are hoping to go. Um, we're looking for uh, also to see that these um, cholera plans, especially the vaccination plans, are more included in long-term country strategies, national immunization strategies, um, in health sector plans, whichever is most relevant for your country when those planning cycles take place. We're hoping to see cholera more as part of that, and that will also uh, you know, help with the coordination um, with the other uh, areas of immunization and, and also the funding mechanisms to make sure that all of the, those are coordinated. Um, and lastly, we're hoping to see uh, how we can use these campaigns, as we had talked about in some of the previous meetings, how we can use these campaigns that are really um, targeting often hard to reach either geographies or populations um, to, to identify those and perhaps provide um, additional services or vaccines that those groups may need. So really would be interested to hear your, your thoughts on how that might be feasible. Okay, my last slide, then I turn it to Olivia. So what comes next? What does this mean for me? That's the question. Um, so those countries, uh, I believe it's just Nigeria and Ethiopia, um, that have a multi-year plan that's already approved by GTFCC. These plans will be able to be implemented um, next year. Those, those doses are already uh, approved. And in the meantime, we look forward to work with those countries to um, submit the application for the remainder of that multi-year plan um, the beginning of next year. Uh, for those that are, the plans are, there's a few countries I know that have quite advanced plans. Um, so I think for those we can meet one-on-one -on -one to kind of discuss the application process and, and what the next steps are. Um, and for those countries that are just 
beginning to think about how the vaccine could be used as part of a longer term plan would encourage you to engage um, mostly with the GTFCC and, and the partners uh, here to support you to, to think about how to develop those plans and what would make sense in terms of a, a future potential application. Um, and you see my, my shout out here also as much as possible just to be including cholera in these other um, uh, health system strengthening plans, whether it's about surveillance or um, you know, use of the vaccine and, and integrating those plans, um, both for the purpose of coordination and accessing additional funding.